In this video, I will show you how to implement user registration, authentication, and authorization in Spring Boot Web APIs using JSON Web Token. Then, in the next video, I will show you how to implement role-based authorization. First, let's create a new Spring Boot project. So here we can type Spring Initializer. Then let's go to the first link. Let's select Maven. In the group, let's provide com.bookstore, for example. Then let's provide the artifact. So we can call this application bookstore. Then let's add the dependencies. So the first dependency is Spring Web. Then let's add dev tools. In this video, we will connect to MySQL database. So let's add the MySQL driver. Then let's add Spring GPA. Also, we need to validate the user data. So let's add the validation dependency. Then we need Spring Security. So here let's type security. Then we need to select either Spring Security or OAuth2 Resource Server. If we select this dependency, then we need to add a JSON Web Token library. But this dependency already includes Spring Security in addition to a JSON Web Token library. So if we select this dependency, then we don't need to add any additional library. That's why I will select this dependency. Then let's generate the application. Let's save the file. I will save it on the desktop. Then let's extract this file and let's open it using an IDE. Then let's configure the application to connect to the MySQL database. So let's go to application.properties. So we will connect to this database. Now let's save this file. Then let's create an entity model. So let's create a new class. And you can create it in the models package. So just here, let's add .models. And let's call it app user. We can call it user, but later we will use a class called user that is defined by Spring Security. So to get rid of any confusion, we can call it app user. Then finish. Then let's add two annotations to this class. Then let's define the different fields of this class. So we need the ID, which is the primary key, and it is auto-incremental. Then we need the first name, the last name. We need also the username, which will be the unique identifier of the user. So the user of the application will log in using the username and the password. Then we need the email that should be unique. And here we have the phone number, we have the address. Of course, we need the password. We can add the role to add the role-based authorization. And then here we have created at, which is the date of adding this user. Let's import this class. Then let's add the getters and the setters. Let's save the file and let's create a repository. So let's add a new interface. First, let's create a new package called the repositories. So just here, let's add dot repositories. And let's call this interface app user repository. Then finish. Then let's extend the GPA repository. Then let's add additional methods that allow us to find users by username and by email. So we need find by username and this is the username and we need find by email and this is the user email. Let's save the file and let's create a new controller. So let's create a new class. Let's create it in the controllers package. And let's call it home controller. So this is a REST controller. So just here, let's add the annotation at REST controller. Then let's create some endpoints. 
So we can create the root endpoint. It will be accessible using the get method. Then we have the slash store endpoint. Then we have slash admin slash home. And finally, we have slash client slash home. So to fix the error, we can delete this annotation and let's replace it with star. Let's save the file and let's run the application. So now the application is running correctly and it is available at this port number. So let's try to access to this endpoint. We can use postman. And let's select this URL. Let's send the request. And here we have unauthorized. So by default, all the routes of the application are protected. And we need to change this configuration. So let's create a new class. So this class will be used to configure the application. So let's create it into a new package and let's call the package config. And let's call the class security config. Then finish. So because we will use this class to configure the security of the application, we need to add two annotations. Then let's create a new bin that allows us to configure the security filter chain. So we will register a new bin of type security filter chain. We will disable CSRF because we are creating a web API. And to use JSON web tokens for the authentication, we have to use the stateless session creation policy. We will allow all the users to access to the root URL. So here for the root URL, we have permit all. Then all the users are able to access URLs that start with slash store. This URL will be accessible to everyone. And the same for this URL and this URL. And to access any other URL, the user should be authenticated. So because we will use GWT authentication, we need to register a bin of type GWT decoder. So first let's save some properties in the properties file. So we can save the secret key and the issuer for example. Now let's read the secret key from the configuration file, which is security config. Then let's register a GWT decoder that will use this key. Let's stop the application. Let's save all the files. And let's run the application again. Let's go to postman and let's send a get request to this URL. And this time we have a success response and this is the welcome message. Now we need to configure the authentication manager to read the users from the database. So first we need to implement the interface user details service. So we will create a new service. And let's create it in the services package. Let's call it app user service. Then let's implement the user details service. And let's implement the method of this interface. So to read the user from the database, we need our repository, which is called app user repository so it is already added to the application so we can request it from the application using auto wired then let's implement this method so we can read the user from the database based on this username and if you want to authenticate users by email then you can call find by email then if we find a user in the database, then we will create a Spring user and we will return it. Otherwise, we will return none. Let's import the missing classes. Then we need to register this class. So just here, let's add the annotation at serves. Then let's configure the authentication manager to use this class. So let's go to security config and let's register a new bin. 
So here we will register a new bin. It is of type authentication manager and it will use the app user service that we already created and registered. Here we have the provider. We will set the user detail service and the user password encoder and we will return a provider manager which is an authentication manager. Let's import the classes. So this authentication manager will use this GWT decoder to decode the received JSON web tokens. Now we need to create the GWT encoder that we will use to create the JSON web tokens. So first let's create a new controller. Let's call it account controller. So this class is a REST controller. So just here, let's add REST controller and request mapping. Then let's read the JSON Web Token parameters from application properties. So we need to read the secret key and the issuer. Then let's create the JSON Web Token encoder. So we can create this function. It is called create GWT token. Here we have the token claims. We will use this encoder, which is a Nimbus GWT encoder. And then using this function, we will create the JSON web token. Now I will show you how to register users. So first let's create a new model. It will be a DTO model. Let's call it register DTU. Then let's add the different properties of this model. Then let's create the getters and setters. Now let's go back to the account controller. And here we need the repository, which is the app user repository. So we can request it from the application just here. Then let's create the register method that allows us to register new users. So this is the register DTO object that contains the submitted data. And using this object, we can check if the submitted data is valid or not. So if we have any validation error, then we will return a bad request with the validation errors. Otherwise, we can create a new user using the submitted data that we have in a register DTO. So we will create an object of type app user, and we will set the first name, last name, username, email using register DTO. By default, the role will be client, and here we have the password. So the password will be the encrypted value of the received password. So we will use this encoder. Then we need to save this user in the database. So first let's check if we have another user having the same username. If yes, we will return a bad request with this error message. Otherwise, we will check if we have another user having the same email address. If yes, we will return a bad request with this error message. Otherwise, we will save this user in the database using this repository. Then we need to create a JSON Web Token to this user. So we can call the method create a JSON Web Token and this is the application user. So this method is the method that we defined just here. Then we can build the response. So in the response, we will add the JSON Web Token and the user profile and we will send a success response to the user. Otherwise, if we have any exception, then we can return a bad request. Now let's save all the files and let's run the application. So I already stopped the application and let's run it again. Now the application is running correctly. And to register a new user, we need to send a post request to this URL. So to this URL, we need to send an object of type register DTU. Let's select body, then row, then let's select JSON. And here let's provide a JSON object. 
let's send the request. So here we have a success response that contains the user profile in addition to the JSON web token. Let's see the details of this user in the database. So let's select this database. Let's select this table. And you can see that we have this new user. Now I will show you how to authenticate users. So first let's create a new model. Let's call it login DTU. Then let's add the fields of this class. So we need the username and the password. Let's create the getters and setters. Then to authenticate the users, we need the authentication manager that we already registered in the security config file. So let's go to account controller and let's request the authentication manager. Then let's create the login method that allows us to authenticate the users. So in this method, we need the submitted data, which is of type login DTU. Then let's check if the submitted data is valid or not. If we have any validation error, we can return a bad request. Otherwise, let's check if the user credentials are valid or not. So we can add the try catch block. In the try block, we can call authentication manager authenticate. And here we have the user credentials. If the user credentials are not valid, then this method will throw an exception. And in this case, we will return a bad request. Otherwise, if the user credentials are valid, in this case, we can generate the JSON web token. So first, we will read the user from the database using this repository. And here we have the username. Then here we can call get JSON web token method to obtain the JSON web token for this user. Then here we will build the response. So we will send the token and the user profile. And then we will send a success response to the user. Let's save all the files. And let's send a request to this URL. Let's select the post method, then body, then row, then JSON. And let's send the username and the password. So here we have a success response. This is the user profile and this is the JSON web token. Now I will show you how to authenticate users based on this JSON web token. So let's go to the account controller and we can create a new method. So this method will be accessible at the URL slash account slash profile using the HTTP get method. It requires an object of type authentication that allows us to read the authenticated user. So here we will create the response. So in the response, we will add the username that we can read from this object. Then we can add the authorities and then we can read the user from the database using our repository, which is app user repository. So we will read the user by username and this is the username. Then we will add the user to the response and we will send a success response. So the URL slash account slash profile requires the user authentication because if we go to security config, we can see that slash account is available to any user slash account slash login and slash account slash register are available to any user. But the other URLs, including slash account slash profile, requires the user authentication. Let's save the file and let's send a request to this URL. So we will send a get request to this URL. We need to include the JSON web token so we can copy it from here. Then here, let's select authorization. Then here we can select bearer token and let's paste the token. Let's send the request. So here we have this success response. We have the user profile. We have the username and the authorities. 
In the next video, I will show you how to implement the role-based authorization using JSON Web Token. You can find the video link in the description.